Yeah, um, it is one of the weirdest matchups. Uh, you think about Kentucky not having a start like this in close to 100 years. Um, Louisville coming off their worst drumming um, they've ever had in school history. Mm -hmm. And both teams I've watched and thought, man, what are these guys doing? I, I get it that it's a weird year with a pandemic. or they, There are stretches where you're like, these guys haven't practiced at all. And then on the other side with Louisville, there are some young guys who I've been really, really impressed with early on. Mm -hmm. And when I start to match up this game, you know, on the analyst side, you match up kind of position by position. And then you go into styles on the offensive and defensive end. And then you go into some of the key little pieces, rebounding and turnovers, how they pass the basketball. And I really match this game up. And I think I like Louisville and, and you know, three and a half, four positions out of five. You know, I, mm -hmm. I think they have talent. Um, I think they're going to get a serious wake-up call, especially some of these young guys that thought it was going to be easy. And when you start out the way they did, let's, let's just think about Dre Davis. Love his game. Love how he started this year. But I think he's going to go back and watch that film and be really humbled um, that you have to mentally be ready to go and then it's not going to be your night to go score 25 every night. How can you mm -hmm. affect the game in other ways? You know, both these teams have young guys – that at times thought it was going to be easy to walk out there and dominate. Mm -hmm. And Kentucky's done it with young guys every year. Louisville's done it, you know, the get old and stay old route for a long time. And when I look at these matchups, I, I can't wait to see how it's going to unfold. Um, you know Kentucky's going to get better every week. They looked much, much better uh, against UNC in their last game, especially in that first half. Actually out-rebounding UNC, which – I don't even know how you do that with all the towers <laughs> they have up there. But uh, it's going to be a battle it is every year. Uh, I know there's a lot of Louisville fans who are just waiting for somebody to come off the bench that hasn't played well all season, and, and uh, bam, they're going to have 30 points, and, and Louisville's yeah. going to get drummed. But, um, you know, Chris Mack has a toughness about him. He, he instills confidence in these guys. Uh, you certainly didn't see that last game, so I think he's got all the tools to motivate these guys and get them really fired up. Um, on paper, I would say Louisville wins this game, but uh, you got to go out there and play it. And, um, and Kentucky, you know, Cal does a good job of, of getting those guys mentally focused for the moment. It'll be different without, you know, a ton of fans there, but it's still Kentucky Louisville. There's still mm -hmm. so much on this game. All these, all these guys hear the buzz. You know, I was told early on uh, by, by Rick and company, you know, you want to stay away from what the sports media guys are saying. <laughs> you know, they're not in practice, you know, they're not watching every day. They don't see everything. And for me, you know, I had some early struggles, some early big time struggles. And um, I did stay away from from listening to people outside the program because it was probably a little harsh there for a little bit. But, you know, you got to rely on your team again. Uh, both these teams have a lot of film they're going to go back and watch and get better from. But, um, you know, ultimately, it's another game and these guys will go out there if they battle, if they play their game and they're healthy. I mean, come on, you're not going to win with the roster you brought to, to Wisconsin. If everybody's healthy. If you can get some guys out there, Carleek in particular, you, you can win this game. Is he the guy you think is the most important for, for Louisville um, in that matchup? And just, I mean, obviously he's done so much for them. He's leading sore, but is he, I hate to say the phrase X factor because that implies that it's like the eighth man who might come in and get, you know, get you eight and five or something like that. But it seems like everybody has zeroed in on when Carly Jones plays well, Louisville wins period. Doesn't really matter anything else. Well, I think you saw what him not being on the floor does to David Johnson mm -hmm. because uh, the guy was trying to set the record for turnovers in a game wearing a Louisville uniform. Rick Pitino said that to Russ Smith a thousand times, but when you didn't have, you know, this backcourt tandem, it was all eyes on David Johnson. He's got to run every pick and roll and he's got to facilitate the offense. You saw the turnovers mm -hmm. uh, from him and Dre Davis. And if, if you're two guys that you're really relying on have double digit turnovers, it's going to be really tough to win games. So I think Carly Jones takes so much pressure off these young guys because he's so good in pick and rolls. He can create opportunities. He can still get his own, but he's, he's still thinking, get my guy some shots. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's his mentality. Because like I said, he's been through so many battles. When you huddle up and the other team's on an 8-0 run, you know, guys will focus on the wrong things. I've seen it with Duke a bunch lately. And Wendell Moore is in a real rut right now. He's, he's, he's in a shooting slump. 
Uh, but more than that is his young freshmen are looking at him like, what the heck are you doing out here? Mm-hmm. And they, they've been bickering back and forth. And I, I know the coach K has talked about the mental health of his guys and needing to send them home for a little bit. I, I really saw them feeling like they had too much weight on their shoulders when they were out there. Mm-hmm. And so you need a veteran guy to, to help with everything when you're out there to help keep things smooth. And I'm an old guy, you know, on the basketball court, I've always had the old man <laughs> basketball game. So I, I, there's, there needs to be more of a premium on that. You've seen it all around the country. You know, mm-hmm. Kentucky's getting slapped. Duke's getting slapped. You know, Gonzaga's winning. Iowa's winning. Baylor's winning. Uh, Illinois is winning. And those teams look really, really strong. Um, they've got veteran guards that can really, really play. And I, I, without a doubt, I say Carly Jones is the most important um, until you get Malik back. Then this, this team can be really good. Mm-hmm. But if, if you're going to have limited guys – you got to have Carly ready to play. 